Black Earth offers a full suite of humic solutions, from high-purity granules to powder, liquid, and soluble formulations, all powered by pure Humalite. Trusted by growers worldwide from one of the world's rarest Humalite reserves. Grow stronger with the power of Black Earth Humalite. Learn more from mind to market by visiting blackearth.com. Bernard Tobin here at the CNM Seeds Wednesday Wheat Event. I'm catching up with uh, Kenny Picharka now from KWS Seeds Canada. Kenny, how's it going? It's going great, Bern. It's a pleasure to be here with CNM or distribution partners with the retail network and talking about hybrid fall rye, which I love to do. Well, yeah, as I say, we're going to talk hybrid rye. Now it's been around a bit. We've seen varieties in the past. You've got a new one. You're collaborating with CNM on Inspirator. Talk about you know why new hybrids for rye. Yeah, well, it's important to bring innovation to the market. This is still a relatively new crop in Canada. I've been around for about 10 years, but from a product like Brissetto that was brought 10 years ago to a product like Inspirator, which brings big advantages in yield and agronomics like lodging and disease resistance, it's just the next step and what we've been making our R&D investment in. So hey, let's break it down. Uh, uh, you talked about some of the advantages here. Uh, yield, what are we looking at You know, versus you know, winter wheat, for example? Yeah, absolutely. So the advantage of rye over winter wheat is in the 15 to 20% range is what you can achieve. Now there's certain management that goes into it that, uh, that I'm sure we'll chat about here, but overall yield potential of winter wheat is there. Also the yield advantage over conventional rye is a big one. And that's where these varieties are 35 to 45% higher yielding, especially in the case of Inspirator. And I saw somewhere here um, in the conversation on a sandy soil, it might be even higher than that. It is. So rye loves sand and sand loves rye. If you go down to the tobacco belt, or if you're in a sandy soil area, that's where rye is going to get its biggest advantages and where wheat can tend to struggle in drought conditions. Mm -hmm. So rye is hardy, it's tolerant to drought, and it'll really scavenge well. Talk about flexibility here. You talked a lot about that when it comes to choosing hybrid rye. Yeah. Flexibility, so you can grow it across geographies. You can grow the same varieties from coast to coast in Canada or Europe, South America. You can go all over, but speaking specifically here close to home, the sandy soil areas north of the lake, the really good soils up through the, through the center, uh, it's going to perform. And it's great in rotation because it'll break up your weed cycles. It doesn't have as many p pest risks, so disease, insects, it can be a really good introduction to the rotation. And then from a sustainability standpoint, it produces a, a lot of roots. So tw twice as much root area as winter wheat is going to give you. So that helps search out nutrients, search out water, or take advantage of, say, you have a wet spring. So it's quite suitable, not to mention the end uses, where the same variety, any of these varieties you see behind me, are suitable for grain harvest or for forage harvest. Uh, and that's a pretty unique thing. Let's talk about resilience. You mentioned water here. Obviously, water utilization was key with this crop. Yes. So uh, for water, because you're scavenging deep, you don't need as much water. So say if you're running irrigation, that's putting fewer inches on. Whereas if you're not irrigating, those roots are going to go deep. And that plant will stay active, even if the top soil profile starts to get dry. So it's going to search out that moisture. It's going to give you more reliable yield, whether it's a, a strong moisture year or a poor one. And that gives you also more consistent grain profile. And if we talk about the feed market, which is one we're really pursuing, you're going to find more consistent protein and you're going to find uh, more consistent overall production, uh, regardless of what kind of rainfall you receive. Tell me what I'm looking at here. I mean, I said yeah. huge heads. Yeah. What are the, what's the profile of this variety, this yeah. hybrid? If you know winter wheat, which most farmers do, your crop's going to be about here in height. And so this is about 30% taller. And for rye, which is doing its photosynthesis, mainly through stems and heads, 80% of it, versus a wheat or a barley, which does a lot through the leaf, you have a totally different structure. So tall stems, strong stems, and the hybrids are much stronger straw than the conventional rye, uh, more than 2x the lodging resistance. But then the heads, you'll see these big heads, they lean over, they fill really well because they flower early, uh, generally about 10 days earlier than a winter wheat's going to flower. So usually milder conditions produces long heads with good grain fill, and it's a really um, fulfilling crop to look at because you could really see the production rate in front of you. Let's talk management here. Um, you know, you had a lot of questions about seeding rate here. Um, Eight hundred thousand seeds—that's much lower than winter wheat. It is. It's a rate that gives you, under good conditions, the ability to get the number of tillers you want. And rye is a tiller-driven crop. With uh, wheat, for example, you're seeding about double the rate, and you want a lot of plants. Whereas with rye, you want 16 to 18 plants per square foot, and then you optimally want 7 to 10 tillers per plant. 
So going at 800,000 seeds is perfect when you're seeding uh, September 20th to October 10th in good conditions. As you get later or if you're in a clay soil or you have uh, some trash that is going to have imperfect seed placement, that's where you go up to 1 million seeds per acre. So we want to make sure farmers, when they have a first experience, they have a good one. Yeah. Because farmers who try it, uh, they generally stick with it. But if you have a bad experience on, on a crop like this that requires a, a seed investment, you, you don't want to have that bad taste in your mouth. Let's talk nitrogen. Obviously a key input here. Um, you got a tall plant here. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking lodging here. What's, 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 I guess, the fine line or the tightrope? How do you manage that? Yeah, it's a combination of stand, fertilizer, and PGRs that are being used. And so it does have more lodging risk than wheat, which has a shorter structure. That being said, we're selecting varieties that when you give them a, a swat, they whip back on you. So the varieties we have today are better than the ones we registered five to 10 years ago. But then on top of that, getting your nitrogen timing on and rye starts growing about a week to 10 days earlier than wheat in the spring. So you might be a little earlier with your first nitrogen and then it does have a higher yield potential too. So if you're pushing the nitrogen, make sure you pair that with a PGR. You get that strong straw strength. You may not shorten the rye as much as you do wheat, but you will improve the stock strength. And that's important because it's a lot of material to put through the combine. And the grain threshing isn't the challenge. Getting all the straw green and through is the challenge. And you don't want to have your combine huffing and puffing unnecessarily. So get the stand right. Don't overdo it. Don't go up to 1.2, 1.4 for grain. You're going to have too many plants and lodging risk. Uh, and then uh, look at that PGR if you are targeting yields over 120 bushels per acre. Quick question on markets. Um, you've got uh, you know distillery market here. You've got milling and baking. Um, I'm hearing a lot of talk of feed. Where yeah. does this fit? Feed is a core end use for us. It hasn't been a core end use for I in Canada up to date, but we have a feed staff in Europe and two-thirds of our rye gets fed to swine, for example, in Europe. Meanwhile, in Canada, not a lot of rye producers are aware it's a good source. So there's uh, advantages in certain animals like swine from a health standpoint, but there's also the number of animals you can feed per acre that is an advantage of rye. So it's a totally suitable feed source, similar to wheat or barley in cattle or poultry. Some advantages in swine, and we actually have an in-house animal nutrition manager uh, who is responsible to do the research and extend it to farmers. So we have our own in-house trained extension person uh, basically explaining what, what the crop can do for you, why producers are using it, and uh, that's both grain and forage. We have a really thriving forage industry for feedlots, but you're getting... You're able to feed more animals per acre, the long and the short, at a better economics on the field production side. And then, especially on, say, swine, you're actually getting an economic advantage on that side as well because you can have better meat quality hit the premium export markets. Now, we're just seeing Inspirator here at CNM Seeds. I mean, Kenny, final question. What's, yeah. the, what's the aspirations for this variety and hybrid rye? Well, I have to say a little bit about KWS, and we are a seed breeding company. We've been around for well over 100 years, foreign, and about 10 years here in Canada. And we're bringing innovation to products. So that's what we see, hybridization. It's bringing advantages in rye, and we're extending it to other crops as well. And what I'm excited about is the suitability for rye in Canada. Because this crop was 3 million acres back in the summer fallow days. And because it didn't receive innovation, it's fallen behind. We have great wheat varieties, great barley, great oats. But we don't have uh, conventional rye varieties that, that kept kept up the progress. So there's a lot of opportunity for a breeder to find heterosis within the lines and there's a lot of ability to bring in new traits that are beneficial like pollen plus for ergot reduction which is a trait we have or like lodging tolerance or we're working on other types like dwarf types with less straw to manage. So Canada is a country very suitable for rye and that's coast to coast. So for a farmer this is a consideration for something that can provide you value, value for the milling, distilling, uh, the feed market we want there to be local and export demand, which there is today, but we want that demand to be available to farmers across the country. So that's what I'm excited for. Well, great stuff, Kenny. I appreciate you making some time for Real Agriculture. Well, thanks, Byrne. This has been a pleasure.